tons and tons of campers out here off of New River Road. Both sides of the road. Crazy. Crazy. Look, this, is, this isn't a park. This isn't even a campground. This is literally just desert. And there's just campers everywhere. Interesting. I remember seeing uh, a ton of campers out here last year. And I thought, oh, maybe there was like an event going on or, you know, some kind of camping. I mean, we're, we're now a mile off the highway and there's still just a sea of campers out here. I wonder if this is like people that maybe have sold their homes, waiting for the interest rates to drop to buy new homes, people that lost their homes, but they have an RV. There is a crap, I mean, this, is, this looks like, like a campground. Like, holy crap. Huh. I'll have to do some research on that. I'm curious if, if there's like been a new there's gotta be at least a news report somewhere here locally about this because this this seems like out of the norm out of, out of the ordinary. Just I'm still we're still passing campers. We're still passing campers. Like this is crazy. That one's got a tent behind it. There's a there's like a bus. Someone lives on that. Clearly there's solar panels on the top. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my Wednesday. We are on the road, but instead of heading west to Salome and Wickenburg, we are heading north to Prescott, Prescott Valley, and maybe Chino Valley. Uh, yeah, more sales, rock and roll. So uh, one of my dad's old friends lives up here. I forget where exactly he lives, but he lives up in the north. And uh, he used to work in the produce business. He was a salesman. He worked with my dad and worked alongside my dad and worked with some of our competitors. Um, so he's been in the industry for a long time and through conversation He was talking to some of his friends that own restaurants up here up, the, up in the north and they were just talking about produce and wish they had more options and more flexibility and and He decided to call down to our warehouse and I spoke to him. I was the first one to talk to him He was just checking in with my dad and he was just like, you know, what's Grant up to? Is he still doing produce? And so I gave him the spiel told him that we're all working with, with our dad now and, and we're growing the business and uh, mentioned the Wickenburg and Salom, and him and my dad started talking, and basically he's kind of like doing sales pro bono. As of right now, he says he has about three like soft yeses. Basically, people that are like, whenever you guys are ready to come up here, let me know. But I want to get a lay of the land. I've been up in Prescott, obviously. Uh, last year, Tiff and I were up here for, for St. Patty's Day. We had a great time. I'd love to go back. I want to go back. I uh, really enjoy my time in Prescott. But I haven't been up here in, in regards to like the business sense and, and since I started working with my dad in that sales kind of state of mind, so. Productive morning so far. We went pretty far north, Chino Valley, and I forget the actual other place that he that he took me. Um, but now we're, now, now we're in Prescott proper, and uh, we just stopped at Park Plaza Liquor and Deli, which is where Tiff and I stopped when we stayed the night here last year. And she got a bottle of wine, a t-shirt, and I bought a little, uh, my little, um, I forgot what the, what, what, what the glass is called, but the glass that I sit my tequila in. But they're super busy, so I didn't get a chance to talk to anybody. Well, that's a wrap for Prescott. Uh, this was definitely a, a different kind of day. Uh, I was with John the entire time, so that's why I didn't vlog more uh, on our trip. I was in the car with him, in his car, talking to him for the most part, getting kind of a, history lesson on his experience in the produce world, uh, what he's done, who he's worked for, that sort of thing. A little different than what my dad explained. So I, I, I don't think my dad even knows all of his different uh, jobs and what he did, but, excuse me. Uh, nevertheless, he took me around to a bunch of his spots that he's uh, frequented. They've already, they already know him. They, some of them are actually ready to order from us. So it sounds like the, 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 the route's gonna happen. Unfortunately, most of these people that we talked to was actually outside of Prescott and further away than Prescott, uh, which is not terrible. Uh, if, if we get customers beyond Prescott, then it makes it kind of easy to kind of work on Prescott and Prescott Valley and get business in there since we're already driving you know, past it. Um, the way these highways are, I didn't actually go through Prescott or Prescott Valley. I, went, I kind of went around it. So, um, we wouldn't necessarily, my, our drivers wouldn't have to necessarily drive through Prescott to get to these these customers. It's all highways, just a different highway. So um, I got a lot of stuff to kind of figure out. 
I wrote down the names of all the restaurants that were uh, possibles and starred the ones that were like ready to order whenever I tell them we're ready. So I gotta kind of, you know, figure out what the uh, what a route would look like. If we're going to Black Canyon, you know, as of right now, nothing in Prescott or Prescott Valley. So where do these other customers fit? And for the most part, it's, uh, I think a 45 minute drive further. So that's not really that, that, that bad. Once you're at Black Canyon, it's another 45 minutes. Let's just call it an hour tops. That's really not that bad. Um, so it's something to think about, to figure out. The fact that people are ready to rock and roll gives us at least the, the push to go, let's make it happen. Just like I did with Salome. You know, we started with two or three customers. It was like, it was rough for about a week. And then after that, we had a full load on a Thursday and the following week I said let's go Mondays and we started doing Mondays and Thursdays now and we've been going twice a week for two months now so that's how this is gonna work this work as well you know we're telling everybody Tuesdays and Fridays and I like I told I told John when I left him I said at this point I'm gonna have to come up here every week now to work and flesh out this route till we fill up a van that's the plan just like the Sloan Wickenburg route so uh, and uh, tons and tons of potential. Because again, we drove through three other towns. Um, Chino Valley was one of them. I forget the other one. And then um, like Dewey Humboldt area. But there was three like outliers outside of Prescott. So the fact that that's where we're starting, now we work our way back into Prescott, Prescott Valley. Um, there's a lot of restaurants in there, tons, tons of. And um, John living there for the last, I don't know how many years, he knows everybody and so uh he'd walk into a place and they'd be hey john how's it going like he's already got that rapport so a lot of potential a lot of potential unfortunately it's just like the Salom route where it's far you know there's not a lot of room for error we can't make mistakes because we can't make a trip back up there for one item um so yeah got some stuff to work on for sure but overall great day great to uh, hang out with him get to know him and uh, pick his brain a little bit well made it back down the hill back back home I literally dropped my stuff changed my clothes packed my bag which quote-unquote packed my bag is water the camera tripod piece and that was it and then I had to make a quick decision on where I wanted to go to hike so we decided to do the petroglyph uh, trail that Tiff and I did. So here we go. So I just can't help myself. I, can't, I just can't help talking about vlogging because the process of YouTube and the process of vlogging and, and, this, and the process of everything that I do is very much a part of what I do. And I, may, I, I told myself, I told you guys uh, a few weeks ago that I was gonna stop talking about vlogging and I was just gonna vlog. but. It is what it is, man. Like, I, can't, I can't not talk about the process. I can't talk about, I can't not talk about what's on my mind, which if YouTube is on my mind, if the vlogs are on my mind, it's... <laughs> so I mean, I, part of me is like, screw it. Let's, let me just talk about YouTube. It's not a negative thing necessarily. It's just a thing. Uh, one of the things I'm coming to terms with, with the recent, you know, going back to daily vlogs and the current state of the world, the current state of the United States, and the current state of the internet, the current state of YouTube. People are a lot more opinionated. People are a lot less, it's funny, back in the day, you had your trolls, right? You had your immature kids that didn't know what the hell they were talking about, but they were the, key, the keyboard cowboys, right? The keyboard warriors, as we called them, because they, they didn't care what they said because they know there's nothing I can actually do you know, block them, so what? They didn't actually do anything, right? Now it's a little different. It's, people aren't necessarily trolls. And we have to get our minds around this, that they're not trolls. These, some of these people are being 100% legitimate, 100% sincere. That is their opinion. That is their thought. They're not being trolls. They just don't care. They just want to say their opinion and they don't care what anyone else thinks about it. None of it really bothers me. Um, most instances I feel compelled to reply in a sincere way, right? Sometimes maybe in a smart ass way. I, I do tend to be a smart ass from time to time. And I definitely am more of a smart ass in Clintus 2.0 than I was before. But there, then there's just some that 
they clearly didn't think through their comment. They didn't think through their reply. They didn't do their research. And by research, I mean, you know, I don't expect everyone to watch every vlog, right? I know some, some people do. Some people watch every single day and every vlog and every minute, and I love the hell out of you. But I know that's not realistic, and I don't expect that from, from most people. But when someone makes a comment about me or about something that I said in one video, in one vlog, and they don't necessarily have the context of, you know, a few other videos in the past, where maybe this is a reoccurring topic or a reoccurring theme or something that I'm building off of, right? And they just kind of throw their opinion in at this one, this one video. And it's like, whoa, 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 that's not at all what's happening. That's not at all what's going on. That's not at all what, 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 what I meant. Um, it's interesting. Now, by no means am I telling anybody to not necessarily do that. I, I obviously I love all comments and all feedback and the worst of the worst just get blocked and I don't ever see their comments again. And the best part is they don't know they're blocked. So the next time they feel like saying something stupid, they can do it to their heart's content and no one will ever see it. I won't see it, you won't see it. It just gets poof, gets gone. They hit post and YouTube goes, yeah, we got your comment, no problem. And then it goes, ha just kidding. And then it gets deleted. Reading some of these comments just makes me kind of scratch my head. And it's like, is that really what you think? Is that really what you think is going on? What's happening? But the biggest thing I have to point out, the point I'm making is you don't get to see every single minute of my day. You don't get to see conversations with my wife or with my kids. You don't get to see, um, I mean, hell, someone made a comment like, I've never seen you and Tiffany fight or argue. Like, how's that possible? How's your guys' relationship so good? I kind of laughed and even someone else chimed in like, do you think they'd post that on YouTube? And I said, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna vlog during an argument. I'm not gonna vlog during a, a, you know, a fight. We don't really fight, but yeah, we know we have arguments. We have disputes. We're two human beings with different opinions. There's things that I do that upset her or, you know, irritate her. There's things that she does that irritates me, but you know, we love each other. We're, we're, we're a couple and we're life partners and you deal with it, right? It's part of being in a relationship. But the fact that someone said that, I don't see you guys fight, you know? How do you guys maintain your relationship or how do you do so well? It's like, we do, I just don't show it. I'm just gonna share that with you. But a couple times now, people have left comments that drinking is contributing to my depression. I, um, there was one just this morning that said, I was worried that when you started doing tequila, didn't get into the tequila thing, that this was gonna happen. And it was on my hiking through depression video, which by the way, that wasn't my original title. I changed it to, to, just to see if it would change the views a little bit. And it did a little bit. I got an initial bump when I changed the title. Again, very interesting how people are very much headline readers. I post a vlog, I can see right away within, within a couple of hours how the video is doing, how the video is trending. I'll change the title and at that hour that I change the title, I can see a bump. So it's effective, it works. And YouTube even recommends you doing it too. Change titles and thumbnails if your video is not performing well. Change titles and thumbnails of older videos to see if they can uh, hit a new audience. I'm doing that. But anyway, um, just not that, that those two people are, might not see this video. Again, that's why I talk about how context matters. And for those people who don't watch every video and they just kind of cherry pick certain videos and they see, hear me talk about something, they're like, oh, and they chime in with their opinion. It's like, well, I just talked about that this last video and you, you didn't see it, sorry. I'll say this, I don't really drink that much. In the grand scheme of things compared to friends and family, yes, I have a tequila collection. It's because I get into stuff. And when I get into stuff, I go all in and I get, I like obsess about stuff and I get obsessive. And so, you know, for months, it's all I'm doing. It's all I'm looking into. It's all I'm consuming content around and it's all I spend my money on. And then I, and then six weeks later, I look back and go, okay, I'm good. So now I have a tequila collection and I might dip into it once a week. Literally, <laughs> I think it's been two weeks since I poured myself a glass of tequila. And this past weekend I had two count them, two margaritas. I didn't even drink at my brother's house. L literally, I had water. So while I appreciate this, the sentiment, I don't think alcohol is the problem because I just don't consume it enough for it to be a problem. Um, <laughs> I don't I hardly ever get drunk. Uh, so can't, I don't think that's it. But again, thanks, thanks for the concern. As I vlog myself on this tr hiking trail, 
two things come to my mind. One, this is my therapy. I am absolutely, this is my new thing, right? I, we were, we were, I was just talking about tequila and how I get into things and I get all into things. Right now I'm, I'm like, I'm all in on this hiking thing and the best part is it's pretty much free. I bought these boots last year with Chuck and I uh, didn't really use, I didn't use them at all last year. Like I bought them and it was at the end of the hiking season and we didn't really do any hiking. This year came around, Chuck and I did that 15 mile hike and I was like, yes, I love this. I wanna do more of it. And then when I discovered all of this in my backyard, I was like, oh, we're definitely doing some hiking. And like I said on that one with Bryce, there's 14 different trails on the other side of this mountain. And that's where I, I was originally gonna to go today, but I decided to uh, save that for another day. Save that for a weekend, because that right there will be a title for the vlog right there in itself. The other thing that uh, came to my head while, while doing this is I'm doing these long, these long talks, these long rants, because I miss streaming. Like if I could stream right now, I would. I literally would just go live right now and go on this hike live. But unfortunately, in this canyon, the connection's terrible. I couldn't stream if I wanted to. I have one bar of LTE. <laughs> no stream here, no data. I feel compelled to talk to you because I would be doing that on stream. And because I'm not streaming, I'm not getting out this energy. So you're welcome. So how was your day? What'd you do? Anything new and exciting? I went to Chino Valley and two other little towns that I honestly can't remember. And then we went down into Prescott and had lunch. I bought John lunch because he's been, you know, doing work for us pro bono. Um, so took him to lunch. We had some barbecue. It's actually really good barbecue. I got the fatty brisket. Or what they call it? They called it the rich, rich cut is what they called it. I got the rich cut brisket, some ranch style beans, and some sweet potato fries, and they're fantastic. And really good Texas style barbecue doesn't need sauce. In fact, you're ruining it with, with sauce. It's like a good steak. You put A1 sauce on a good steak and you're ruining that meat. If it requires A1, that means it was a terrible, either a terrible cut of meat or it was ter terribly grilled or terribly cooked. So they had this whole counter of sauces. I think they had like six different sauces. I was like, holy crap. Now I'm a sauce guy when it comes to fries, tots, um, chicken fingers, chicken tenders, chicken nuggets, that sort of thing. So I see all these sauces and I'm like, I gotta try them, especially the, the, the mustard one. They had a hot, hot mustard one, they had a habanero one, and then they had a, a sweet one that was like cherry and pineapple. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta try these. So I made them all and I did dip one piece of brisket into a couple of different ones just to kind of see what it did to the flavor profile. It was good, but again, the meat was so good. The meat was fantastic. The brisket was, Chuck, if you ever make your way to Prescott, uh, I'll give you the name of that place. There's the C. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, but yeah, it was actually really good, really good. Um, but with the sweet potato fries, they were, I was dipping the fries in those sauces. Oh man, that mustard sauce. I'm a big mustard fan. passing the uh, petroglyphs back there. And this couple was coming up along on the other side. Apparently there's a trail on the north side, or well, I guess that's the south side, sorry. Uh, so they just kind of cut across it now, or ahead of me, so I'm kind of slowing down a little bit, let them get ahead. Because they saw me by myself. So all of a sudden I start talking. Like, who's he talking to? After watching a couple of videos this weekend and testing a few things out, both on and off the vlog, this is definitely a format style. I don't know what you call it, it's a style? It's a style, it's a shot that I wanna do more of. Set the camera up, use the wireless mic, and either enter or exit, exit a, 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 a scene. There's something cinematic about it, there's something, you know, it just elevates my vlog a little bit more. Something that not a lot of people can do, and uh, it's something that I've always been a fan of. When I bought the the M50 and the Joby arm, you know, I, I, I tried to do more hands-free vlogging because uh, I think it, I think it looks cool, you know. I think I think it just again it's it's, it's more cinematic. Um, biggest problem is with the D log, I can I can barely see the screen. I can't I can't see it at all with my glasses on. So I was using my iPhone just to kind of frame it up a little bit. 
but it looks like I'm, oh wow, looks like my camera's actually gonna die. These long takes are actually burning the battery a lot more. I swear I charged yesterday, maybe I didn't. Oh well, let's get to hiking. So I'm gonna start bringing my little monopod with the tripod base. I've tested it. it, it barely fits in my backpack. So I can bring it with me. And I just need to test whether or not I can bring the full camera kit as well alongside the monopod. It might be a tight fit, but well worth it because I need the accessories. To get the shots that I want to elevate my vlog, I need something a little higher up because this is this little tripod base on the bottom of my camera, and which means it's pretty much always on the ground. So I'm, if you've noticed, I'm trying to shoot at upward angles or downward angles so that I kind of walk into frame and, but yeah, you're, you're basically on the ground on a rock, but three feet above me. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast on the drive in, uh, up there or down, yeah, it was, it was on the drive up. Um, Again, I know I, I mentioned it in a previous vlog, but I started listening to Rogan's podcast again because he's now on Apple uh, uh, Apple Podcasts. And you know, I don't listen to every single episode, but last few guests have been intriguing and I at least give it a shot, right? I at least uh, hit play and see what the person's about and what they plan on talking about. And this one was about, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, something about kids and therapy even though that wasn't necessarily the topic that I was interested in, it was more of just about therapy in general. One of the things that she was talking about was how exercise can, you know, uh, help you get out of a mild depression or uh, a sadness and, you know, all the, all the negative feelings that you might have. And it makes sense, releasing endorphins, right? Whether it's just uh, walking, she mentioned just walking. Um, walking can be enough if you do it long enough, if you do it fast enough, which we all know this, you know, that's why Tiffany gets 10,000 steps a day. You know, you're burning so many calories just walking. You just have to do it for uh, a certain amount of time and enough throughout the day, hence the 10,000 steps. But I feel it, man. Like, this definitely elevates me. This definitely boosts my mood. But I have to say, I'm a little jealous. Tiffany started working out at the beginning of the year and she hasn't stopped and she's increasing her weights and she's getting to the point here. I, I guarantee you this month, March, she's gonna buy some new weights because she's gonna need bigger weights. I think the heaviest weights we have in the house are 15 pounds and she's using those now. I'm like, she's gonna need some bigger ones very soon. But anyway, I was working out last year, right? I was working out with my brother, Austin and my dad and I did it for about two months and then December came and we just had so much going on after work that I just, it was an excuse for me not to go, you know, whether I was door dashing or I was going to Bryce's basketball games or we had holiday parties or, you know, act, school activities, whatever it was. It was enough for me to stop going and then I lost, I broke the routine and I haven't gone back since. And now here we are, first week of March. I haven't been to the gym since November. And now, of course, at the time, Tiffany was like, you know, making a comment how, you know, fitness and working out has always been her thing, not mine. And here I am working out and she's not. She, she felt bad. Now the roles are reversed. She's working out. And at first I didn't care. I'm like, yeah, you go girl. Cause I know how much she loves it. And she's seen results, which is of course, what motivates you to keep going and push yourself further. And uh, you know, she told me what her goals are, which is great. And I'm, I'm all about supporting her. So now I'm thinking I need to get my ass back in the gym, have the same goals. Basically we want to roll up this summer to the pool. Looking good, looking, uh, proud, what's the word, uh, confident, confident, you know, we're dads, we're moms, we're in our forties, but you know, you can still tone up, look like you actually give a shit about your body. So that's our goal or that's her goal. That's my goal. That's, that was the goal I gave myself last year. And obviously I, I dropped the ball. So I'm loving these hikes right now. And I want to try and squeeze as many of these in before it gets too hot. So I'm going to continue doing this. This is mostly cardio and mental and, you know, vlog content. Definitely want to get back to the gym though, even if it's just twice a week, right? If I could do two, two times a week, you know, day of pushing and a day of pulling, even if it's just once a week, that's better than nothing. And if I can start there, 
I can build on that, right? Two days become three days, now I'm throwing a leg day in, right? Three days become five, because now I'm gonna do two days of pulling and two days of pushing. It's just a matter of incorporating it into my schedule. Now the days that I go to the warehouse, I can't do it before I, I go to work, because A, everyone's asleep, B, it's dark outside, and C, the gym's closed, or my gym's closed. My gym's not 24 hours, so it opens at 6 a.m. Uh, so I'd have to do it after work, or my work from home days, I could do it in the mornings, but the work from home days are still pretty busy. So yeah, just a matter of incorporating it into my after work activities and finding the sweet spot where it's not super busy, because the last couple times I've gone, I take it back, I have gone to the gym since, since this, this uh, November. I went at least twice, once with my dad and once with, by myself at our local gym. So I've gone two times, irregardless, I've stopped going but yes, they open at 6 a.m. And the last few times I went, which was after work, they were stupid busy. And there's only so many machines, so it makes it difficult to try and get your workout in when you're waiting in line, you know? Thanks for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. I, I have to say, you being here with me while I'm doing my hike just makes it that much better. Looks like they're boxing up some trees out here. That's interesting. They're just, uh, they're snagging these mesquite woods. There's like three there and a bunch more back there and some over here. I saw them bulldozing out here and saw some, some trucks and I was like, I wonder what they're doing out here. Are they building something out here? No, they're, they're snagging up some trees. Interesting. And there's this road right here. They clearly just been made bulldozing. There's some more boxes back there for trees. And it comes in here too. So yeah, it makes me kind of curious. Well, I just spent... Uh the last hour putting all my orders in and now it's nine o'clock and I think I'm just gonna go to bed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. As I said, really do appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow.